People who have gotten their bosses fired. How? About 15 years ago, I worked at a major university in the IT department. After I was hired, it took me a couple of months to realize my boss was a sociopath, as was his second guy. Once I realized what I was dealing with, I just tried to keep my head down because I didn't want to job hop so soon after leaving my last job, but they made that impossible. We had a database administrator, and I was interested in becoming a DBA, so I talked to him a lot about what I should do to transition from a programmer to a DBA. The VP of IT, my boss's boss, would stop by and talk to me and ask me about my aspirations. So I told her about wanting to be a DBA and that I was actually taking night classes, so I could. This was a woman who my boss referred to as she who must not be obeyed in a totally disrespectful manner. As the months went on, I saw more and more egregious behavior by my boss and his second toady. We had a large corporation consulting and transition to their database. This included a young guy who was doing the database install, including ordering the right equipment and migrating the data. We also had student workers in our department. They were students who worked part-time hours. One of these was a young woman. The big corp young guy and the young woman started going to lunch together. Apparently, this was offensive to my boss, who threatened both of them with termination for fraternization. The university had no such rule. My boss was just making it up as he went. About six months after I was hired, the DBA quit. I went into our weekly staff meeting, and at the end, my boss announced that I'd been promoted to DBA. My spidey senses were tingling because of his tone of voice and because this was the first I was hearing about it. After the meeting, I went to his office to thank him and tell him I really appreciated the chance. He was very angry. Apparently, his boss made him promote me. I had no idea. The next thing I know, I'm being called into my boss's number two guy's office. He told me that performance reviews were coming up and I would have to be reviewed on the job description of DBA rather than the job description of my old position. That is, unless I turned down the DBA position. Yep, he was threatening me to get me to turn down the promotion. I asked him to see the written description of my old position as well as the one for DBA. They couldn't give them to me because they didn't exist. Now I can be a pretty stubborn person, and this really pissed me off. I didn't do anything wrong and now my job was being threatened. Part of my job duties during the six months of my employment involved working with the head of every department of the university, including the legal department. I had a good working relationship with every head of every department, so I made an appointment with the university's head counsel. I explained the situation to him, including my boss's boss making him promote me and my boss threatening me with my performance review. I told him that, although I was studying to be a DBA, I was really not qualified to be one without some hard work, and if the university didn't want me to take the position, I would absolutely turn it down. I also mentioned my boss's nickname for his boss and the issue with the student worker and the big corp guy. Apparently, the student worker had already filed a harassment complaint, so the head counsel knew about it. He told me I had been promoted by someone, boss's boss, who had every right to promote me and I should not worry about anything. He said if my boss gave me any more trouble, that I should let him know. A week later, my boss and his number two toady were fired. My boss ended up working at a small city college and is there to this day. I pity his employees. I left the university about two years later and had a successful career as a DBA. I feel like this is a lesson in the importance of networking and never burning bridges. Story 2. It was my supervisor. It got to the point that I had decided to quit. I had my resignation letter in my purse, but decided to let his boss know why I was quitting. Supervisor would talk about all the people on our team constantly, but only behind their backs. I got so sick of telling him to cut it out. My husband and I happened to work at the same place, different departments, and my supervisor would make nasty comments about triads. With him. Ugh. What hotel would pick for afternoon delight, stuff like that. It was so bloody uncomfortable. Apart from this, he spent most of his supervising time outside smoking. Problem was, supervisor was one of the guys, and I was the only girl. Turns out his boss was disgusted, and told his boss who lost his mind. They started an investigation, which took three days. They interviewed staff, they corroborated what I said, they checked the security cameras, saw he was spending most of his workday outside smoking, and was fired. When he was told he guessed, wasn't hard, that I was the person who complained and tried to get to me to apologize that I took it the wrong way. The best feeling was my coworker surrounding me as he walked out. That was a lovely ending to it all. Story 3. Was working maintenance at an ice rink. The rule for anyone who knows how an ice rink works is if the Zamboni doors open, you get the hell off the ice. Some knucklehead decided to ignore the fact that they were open and that I was standing in the doorway and decided to rip off one last slap shot. The puck bounced off the glass and hit me in the head. I was okay, but reported it to my boss because we have to fill out an incident report for things like that. The boss asked, are you okay? I said, I feel okay. Then he responded with, well, we don't really have to report it then, do we? I reminded him of the protocol, but it was clear he didn't want to do it. Since he didn't want to do it, I sent a descriptive email of the incident up to the administration because I felt there should be some sort of documentation or paper trail in case of, God forbid, I ended up having a brain hemorrhage or something a few days later. The boss was fired by my next shift. Exactly the way to go. You never know. 
anything needs to be documented. Story 4. Our desks were separated by a five-foot cubicle wall. He was under the mistaken impression that it totally blocked sound. Thus, I got to hear all his loud phone conversations, primarily his calls, including those with his boss's fiance. I figured it was none of my business and tried to ignore it. Well, there was a position in another department that I was interested in, and as per procedure, I handed in an application to my talkative boss. Didn't hear anything further and followed up a couple of days later, only to be told that something must have happened to the application. Filled out another one and handed it in. As I returned to my desk, I hear the boss on the phone with a friend laughing about how he had just trashed my application again, and how he was never going to let go of me. I go to boss's boss and angrily offer my resignation, telling him what I had just overheard, explaining that I was constantly hearing his phone calls like his calls, like with woman's name and woman's name, and boss's boss's fiance's name. He got very quiet. He told me to go back to my desk and he'll take care of everything. The next day I came in and the boss was gone. The day after I had an interview with the other department, got the position. I tend to avoid office drama, but really, he should have stuck to screwing his boss's fiance and not tried to screw me as well. Story 5 In college, I worked in a takeout restaurant just off campus, and we were all employed by the school. I was 17 to 18 years old and my boss, the manager, was a 40-something creeper, hitting on me, touching me inappropriately, trying to massage my shoulders, tickling me, putting his hands on around my waist, despite me asking him to stop. Then he friended me on Facebook, I declined, and suddenly my work schedule was changed. I was on shift during hours when I had class, and when I explained the problem, I got taken off the schedule altogether. I told the assistant manager what was going on, which I was explicitly told by the manager not to talk to the assistant, and he reported what was going on to upper management. Boom. Manager was fired. I worried for a while if he was going to come after me for that. Story 6. My friend was fired because she abandoned her job while on short-term disability, because while on approved leave, they already ate for her to return, never informing her, by their own admission, and when she obviously didn't return to work, she was fired. The locker she had at work had her work boots in it that the company pays $90 a year towards. However, there isn't a pair under $100 available, so you always end up having some come out of your paycheck. At that point, they are yours regardless of the company line. They disagreed and said they were thrown out. She reported them stolen, and the HR director responsible for getting her fired was fired. Another one. Phoned him to tell him I won't be at work for the rest of the week as my mom is terminally ill in hospital. The next day, about an hour after she passed away, he phoned and asked why I wasn't at work. I just hung up on him so I wouldn't say anything that would get me in trouble. The next day, I sent the area manager a WhatsApp message explaining what he'd done and attached a video of him breaking the freezer door while having a tantrum which cost the store nearly 5,000 pounds in lost stock and the repair costs, which he told the AM it broke on its own. I got fired that day and I got two weeks off with full pay. On the bright side, you always know that you were there for her no matter what. I'm sure she would have been very proud of the way you handled that. You were by her side in her final moments, and that's what counts. Even if he was a total jerk afterwards, he can't take that from you. Oh, and since you're already halfway through the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, so you won't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Story 7 About 13 to 14 years ago, I was working as a web designer for a dot com. In our immediate group, we were a creative director, a creative manager, and two of us were designers, and we were all part of the marketing department. The creative director was a joke. Brought in by the previous vice president of marketing, who he was friends with, he hardly did any work himself. He just played online poker waiting on us to send him things for approval, and he'd never stick around late when the rest of us needed to stay late to hit a deadline or deal with a crisis, etc. The creative manager, who'd been in charge for a couple years before the creative director's hiring, still ran the day-to-day. So the creative manager gave his notice that he'd accepted a new job, and when I met with the current VP of marketing to discuss transition, I mentioned that the creative director would need to step up and pull his weight. I guess a similar message was expressed by a number of people, and less than a week after the creative manager's last day, the creative director was fired. This kind of sucked because we went down from four to two people in our group. I was appointed acting creative manager, and we eventually did hire one more designer. I left the company a couple of months later, too, after the latest VP of marketing was let go and there were going to be a tenth different person overseeing marketing in my five years there. And the a-hole creative director? He'd reached out at some point, looking for files for his portfolio, I think. And it happened to be in the two-week window where I'd accepted my next job but hadn't yet started, so I mentioned my new position. Well, he fired off a copy of his resume to the company president and tried to poach my new job out from under me. On my first day at the new job, the president mentioned that somebody else from the same company also applied for the job and forwarded me the application email to see if I knew him. Saw that the date was after he and I had last communicated. Story 8. My manager wanted to prove I'm slacking off so he could write me up. So he watched CCTV footages, then wrote, printed out, and signed a detailed 17 pages worth of Word document. What did I do in the past two days? With timestamps, like 7.59 arriving, 8.1 speaking with coworker A and B, 8.7 sitting down to my desk, etc. He told me that he's not happy with my work ethics. 
If I won't improve my efficiency, I'll be fired. I took the papers and showed to his boss and told her that I'm not happy with my manager's work ethics and his efficiency might be better if he wouldn't watch 17 hours of CCTV footage to spy on an employee. She was terrified. It would have been a rock-solid lawsuit for me, but I love my job, and we had to search for a new manager. Also, my salary was raised. Good old Uno reverse card. Story 9. I have told this story a few times before, so I'll keep it short. I didn't get my boss fired, but she blames me. Boss and I didn't get along, but she didn't have the authority to fire me, but she promised her boyfriend my job. So she hires her boyfriend in another position, with a plan they'll drive me to quit, and then she can just promote him to my job. This lasted for about a month. She fired him when they broke up. He confessed their scheme to me on his way out, but actually become friends at this point, and I told him he should really tell HR. HR does their investigation, she's fired because sleep with me and I'll give you a job is textbook <laughs> and she tells anyone who listened that it's all my fault because I didn't quit like I was supposed to. Story 10. I took a phone call on my cell when at my desk. Middle manager came up and screamed at me, yelling about how I was not allowed to take calls for clients while at that office. I was a contractor and made it perfectly clear that I did work for multiple clients prior to doing work for this company. The CTO's office was 10 feet from mine. He came out and stood in his doorway, listening to the rant. When the middle manager was done, I just looked over at the CTO and said, It's him or me. And at the moment, I don't care what you pick. CTO walked the middle manager out right then. Funny thing, I didn't hang up throughout the incident. It was my wife on the other end. I was spending about 70 hours a week at their site digging their staff out of a hole they had dug themselves in. Story 11. Complained for months about her breaking company policy, and thus state labor law since the state considered a signed employee handbook to be a binding contract for both sides. Nothing. Tricked her into saying the things I'd been complaining about for months on a conference call with her boss and her boss's boss. Fired that day. Context. My boss tried to tell me I couldn't take breaks. The company policy handbook, which I had signed and thus became a binding contract by state law, laid out lunch and or breaks based on length of shift scheduled for. When I pointed this out, she switched to scheduling me by myself and then strolling by the store to check up on me occasionally, writing me up when she caught me having closed the store in order to take breaks or eat lunch. Called her boss, regional director, and complained. Got the write-ups removed, listened to her tell my boss to chill the heck out and let me take my breaks. She still didn't do it. Further, formal complaints resulted in no changes. I know there was a quarterly conference call coming up, so I developed the habit of walking into her office and saying, it's time for my break, and making her say every time that I wasn't allowed to go. She got in the habit of doing it kind of absentmindedly in an increasingly aggressive tone. So then I did it again in the middle of the conference call and she blew a gasket, ranting at me about how many times she told me that I was not allowed to take breaks under any circumstances, etc. The call, which she always put on speakerphone, went dead silent. It took her about five seconds to realize what she'd just done. And then, before she could try to begin damage control, her boss politely cleared her throat and said, Boss, I've told you before that this is incorrect. I grinned a big old grin and went back to work. And there was a temporary manager from another store there the next day. Turns out she had my formal written complaints intercepted before they got to her boss, which I wasn't aware was possible. Apparently she had friends in high places, so I imagine that didn't go well for her. Story 12. Public agency hires someone out of private industry at the vice president level. She immediately begins hiring all her cronies and bum kissers from her old job at very nice salaries for jobs that didn't previously exist. That's the sort of corruption we're used in North Carolina. So, no biggie so far. But she runs out of slots she can just create with a little paperwork, so she starts to bully people in order to get them to quit so she can fill their jobs with their friends. One job was that of executive assistant, and she was pretty harsh on the woman who had that job. I witnessed some of this and told the assistant to take it to HR, which she did and HR just told her to document everything. So she did, and one day the VP caught her recording a yell fast on her phone. The VP wanted to know what was up, so the exec assistant told her that HR wanted documentation and that I had told her how to record conversations on a cell phone, which was legal, by the way. I checked. So she yells at the exec assistant, yells at me, and then gets on the phone to HR, yelling at them that they were a bunch of incompetent fools and that she wanted to know what kind of Mickey Mouse outfit she was working for if she couldn't fire whoever the hell she wanted to fire. Now we all know there are three truths in life. No tugging on Superman's cape, no land wars in Asia, don't piss off HR. Sure enough, HR initiated an investigation that took 300 hours of interviews with everyone in the department and a board of inquiry headed up by a senior VP. She was called to the senior VP's office at 4.30 in the afternoon and when we came to work at 8 in the next morning, her office was cleared out. Most of the cronies she hired were gone within a couple of months. No one wanted to work with them, so with no projects in their docket, they knew the writing was on the wall. When the last of the cronies left, her job was eliminated and her staff transferred elsewhere. It was like the evil VP and her mob never existed. Story 13. My direct supervisor, Linda, was a cantankerous old woman with poor education and even worse people skills. About three months after I started, I got her so pissed off just by doing my job that she cursed me out. 
got up from her desk and quit. I don't even remember what I said that set her off. I probably asked her if she was done with her half of something that I needed in order to finish my half and became exasperated when she wasn't because she'd been farting around all morning. It was a common occurrence. After Linda walked out, her boss refused to hire her back when she begged, even though she'd been there something like 15 years, because her attitude was so terrible and she'd become such a toxic, pathetic excuse for a human being. I got a pretty solid raise. Most of Linda's tasks, our boss was not unkind and took over some things herself, while giving me more practical things that I enjoyed doing. And even though my car was fine, she'd always have me drive her car to go make coffee runs, deposit checks, run errands, etc. It was a Toyota Solara convertible, and she'd tell me to take the top down and have fun. I liked that job. I learned quite a bit, and if I hadn't found something closer to home for even more money, I probably would have been there quite a while. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy. Have you ever seen someone get fired on the spot? Story 4 was wild. See you in that video.